Welcome to the They Follow from Burners podcast with your host, Raider Ragu. Please download the podcast and follow the show. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Raider Ragu. Let's go. Yo, 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 what's up, Raider Nation? What's good? This is your boy, Raider Ragu himself. What it do? Check it out. Before we get started, please like, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel, the podcast on all platforms, Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify, you can go on the Buzzsprout website to the direct feed where the, they follow me from Burner's podcast. Follow the show. Put it on auto-download, please. Auto-download is what we need. Thank you. So, man, it's going down right now in Raider Nation. Don't even know where to really, really uh, jump off at. So, we got a lot of scenarios at work right now. So, let's give y'all the latest. All right, so we, being the Raiders, I say we, are going to hire AP and Champ Kelly. They're getting intelligence gathering. So Champ has had interviews. AP has had interviews. Mark has interviewed people, okay? So... Reports say he interviewed Leslie Frazier for the head coaching job. Leslie Frazier was with the Bills at once, one time. Leslie Frazier also was an interim coach that got the job, too. He said he interviewed Dodds, Ed Dodds in Indianapolis as the GM for the GM job. Also, Telasco from the Chargers for the GM job. Check the intel. You can get there. Right, Chargers. We talked about the guy not being disgruntled, but got ran from there. Probably not mad at sharing a little info during the course of an interview, especially if he thought he had action at getting the job. Uh, the Colts guy seems to be a pretty good judge of talent. I forgot to even mention that they got Zaire Franklin, the number one tackler in the National Football League, if I'm not mistaken. And I, he's he's a late rounder, man. He's a fourth round at least. Outside the top 100 players. So, you got that working. Um, so, right now, oh, and then Fraser, you, you, you interview him. You say, hey, how'd it go when you took over the team after being an interim coach? Just kind of pick his brain as far as that goes. You know what I mean? A little info. It's all about info. Same with... Graham. I heard Graham goes to Carolina, interviews, blows them away, knew their whole roster, no notes. They like them. They want them to uh, come back for another interview. Not going to happen. Possibly could happen. You don't ever know. If it's in the next day or so, then you have AP. Leave Atlanta hollered at AP, Tennessee hollered at AP. Right? So this is where you go over and you see what people think of the Raiders program, the, the direction that they feel like the Raiders are going in and, and judge the buzz around the league for the Raider job in general, right? So you got AP, he goes and gets info. Champ goes and gets info. Davis is in Vegas collecting info. Then they meet back, share all that info, that data, right? And then announce that these guys are getting the job. Now they've done their due diligence. They hired without, out this, I mean, they interviewed outside of the building. I mean, they already had two brothers, so I'm the Rooney rule. I'm, I'm kind of foggy on that as to why, but maybe they didn't have to interview any brothers. They just interviewed Leslie on merit. Okay, so we got that part done. That part is, is pretty much settled. Now, here's a potential issue, though. 
Patrick Graham, our fine uh, defensive coordinator who was responsible for the defense turning around. I mean, those are his guys. It's his unit. It's his scheme. He brought in Antonio as a linebacker coach in that scheme. Something we never really talk about on um, the Follow Me for Burners with Regular Ragu, the Regular Ragu show, is not in. we're not in the building. So we don't really know the relationship between uh, Patrick Graham and AP. There could be a bit of resentment there. You feel me on the on the resentment tip? Human nature, the human nature tip, right? So you like, nah, champ. I mean, uh, um, Patrick Graham seems like a solid guy. Blah blah blah. This and other, but and he probably is. But who wants to sit there and have to answer to a guy as a boss that you brought in as a linebacker coach? I mean, think about that. Now, like we were saying, I said earlier, he could be a solid dude, but that's still a tough deal. You know, asking yourself at your gig right now that you're at, guy that you brought in, could you later be calling him boss and whatnot, him telling you what to do, what, what he need to see and all that? You know what I mean? So, now, more more to that is PG, Patrick Graham, is getting head coaching interviews, right? I know the Chargers interviewed him. Chargers could be rent, Rooney, ruling him. Or charges could be doing what we're doing on the intel tip because this is the intel season, the season of lies. I heard somebody say uh, recently, and it's pretty, that's pretty accurate. That's fairly accurate. So, Patrick Graham getting head coaching looks. All right, D, D coordinator looks as well. I think the Giants called about that. At least one other team caught about a D Corp. Look, that's a different thing. That's a parallel move. In a parallel move, he might not do that. He might just go on and stay and build. He's got his guys. He knows he can work with management here in Vegas. He knows he's good with the coach. I mean, we don't know their relationship, but we know that they know each other. They're familiar already okay with how one each each other operates that sort of thing he already is established in las vegas so why would you take a lateral move and go be a decor somewhere else unless it was about money and then in that case things can be done about that however if you get a head coaching job offer your patrick graham let's just say hypothetically he's out of there wouldn't you be Everybody wants to be the man just because, like my man uh, Rico said on Paid in Full. You know what I'm saying? So he goes off to be a head coach somewhere. We we know we already didn't have an OC. So now when you Mark Davis, you getting Antonio Pierce and Champ Kelly. And that's it. They got to build a staff. That's a whole different thing. All right? So when... Raider Nation, Raider players, we're saying let's stay in this direction. We, for the most part, are saying with Graham and AP and Champ, okay, and then work on the offense. That's what, if we're not saying that, that's what we mean, right? I'm speaking for everybody, I know. We got to regroup with another DC. That's a whole different story now. However, could work out. So check it. This is a scenario where AP is left without coordinators on offense and defense, all right? There was talk of uh, Cliff Kingsbury. You go with, with Cliff on offense, say that happens, all right? Um, and then give you a little bit of history. The Giants won the Super Bowl. New York football Giants won a Super Bowl back in the – 07. Then they came back and won. And uh, they beat the Patriots, man, twice. <laughs> it was undefeated. They beat them. Right? So, didn't they beat the Patriots twice? Or am I tripping? We know the Giants beat the Patriots when the Patriots was undefeated. They beat them in the Super Bowl. AP started linebacker on that defense. The D core 
on that defense was none other than Steve Spagnuolo, the Kansas City Chiefs defensive coordinator currently. What if there's a scenario where Spags comes and coaches with his guy, you know, kind of be the give us that veteran presence on the staff and coach a heck of a defense all at once, right? Pry him away from a rival, division rival. You know what I'm saying? Pry him away from a division rival, great defensive coordinator, veteran coach presence when we have a young coach who's going to be basically a rookie coach because if you don't count the interim. So say if we could pull that off and then Clingsbury as well and then build out a staff from there if we needed to do that. It's a decent scenario right there. You got some decent O and some some good defense too. Blitzing D. Uh, add some guys personnel wise and do the doggone thing. In that scenario that could work out. What if Spagnolo comes through and uh, works with this guy, AP, turn this whole thing into a a whole different thing if we had to. So that's just, you know, a scenario that I I was thinking about, you know, working out if PG gets a head coaching position. Because I do not blame him if he gets a head coaching offer, if he's out of here. Would not hold it past him. I mean, hold it against him in the least. Uh, I, I would expect him to take that job. So just going back over it, we're going to hire Champ and AP. A little bit of uncertainty right now about Patrick Graham because he's getting some looks. He's getting head coaching interviews. It's a little bit up in the air with him right now. That's the tiny bit of uncertainty. Otherwise, we know the direction we're going. Um, Clingsbury is seems to be the front. That's all I keep hearing his name as far as OC. That doesn't mean that he's the only guy because that could just be what they're putting out there. There could be coordinators that are still uh, coaching in the playoffs that they want to take a look at. So that could be smoke and mirrors. But everything seems to be coming together. The uh, announcement of Champ and AP will come by Friday, I said on the other show, and we'll start building this thing. So since we handled that little Raider business, Right, a little pressing news right there. Let's talk a little playoffs. So we we're past the wild card round. Not even gonna get all into um, the wild card round too much because I mean, let's face it, man, it wasn't that great. It was playoff foot. Don't get me wrong, but the, you know, outside of that Rams versus Lions game, none of the games were really competitive. I will say I was surprised how Green Bay jumped out on Dallas and got after them. Everybody wants to blame Dak, but, and the interceptions were bad, but their defense couldn't stop anybody. They ran all over the Dallas Cowboys. The Eagles, that offense, man, if 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 it looked like that because Shane Steichen left, yeah, man, so the dude Sirianni should be, I ain't going to say fired, man, but definitely reprimanded for putting that trash out there, man. And, and Jalen, that wasn't a good look, bro. I don't know if you hurt or if they – what they're doing in that offense with you, man. But that's not going to get it, bro. Y'all not going to beat anybody like that. And if it's that big a drop-off because A.J. Brown isn't there, and I know he's a big deal, that's terrible, man, because you guys just – it was terrible. They just kept zero blitzing y'all like it was Pop Warner, bro, on the real. It's like a high school game where they didn't respect the quarterback at all. It's just like we're just going to blitz him and try to hurt him. And then after a minute, Jalen got shell shot. It ain't because he really was getting sacked. It was, you know, they maybe touching him a little bit, and they just kept coming after him all night. Coach uh, never came with no, you know, 11, 12 personnel to try to get nothing blocked up. Uh, Jalen wasn't really trying to run. It just looked bad, man. Eagles, that looked bad. NFC East, y'all, you guys went and – and shit it down your leg. I can't even say it no other way, man. That's what happened to the Cowboys and the Eagles in the playoffs. Rams showed good but lost. Uh, golf versus Stafford in Detroit. We know the story there, so golf won that. Golf is the man as far as that. Gunned down the Rams, sent them home to Cancun, and uh, got the last laugh, so to speak, on, that, on the coach that gave up on him. And then, you know, the Dolphins – 
you guys, bro. That's what happens when you got to go play in the cold because you couldn't clinch the division coming down the stretch. That's what happens when you lose games. That's the importance of home field advantage. And that game was a stinker of a game. I'm surprised you guys scored. Um, and then let's just move through that. Uh, the, oh, also CJ, you know, CJ, wow. I had a feeling that they, they could beat um, Cleveland, but wow. <laughs> Flock off the couch came to an end. All right, so now. Texans uh, and Lamar in Baltimore. And then you got KC and Buffalo in Buffalo. All right, we I'm not even going to talk spread. You know, we might come back later, right before the game, maybe maybe Friday, and do like against the spread or something. Maybe. I'm, I'm not even saying that's going to happen, but I'm just saying who's going to straight up win this playoff game, uh, who's going to play in the AFC Championship. And – I'm not going to get into the political, to the politics of of the optics of it and who or who does not have like the pop star in the crowd that they keep showing on camera and all that. And they're trying to make a spectacle of and that this whole thing is a big TV show after all. And we have to keep that in mind. But I'm going to just keep it foot. I'm going to keep it football. Bills Ravens, man, AFC Championship. Mahomes on the road is done. CJ is going to do his thing. Not going to be quite enough for the Ravens team. On the other side, we got Green Bay, San Francisco. And then we have Detroit and Tampa Bay. And I know this sounds front runnery, front runter ish. <laughs> or a non-hot take-ish, but we'll take the two home teams here. We'll take the two home teams. Green Bay, I respect you guys, but I do not expect you guys to be getting your run game going like you did against uh, Dallas, against San Francisco. So I got the Niners. It might be a close game, but I got the Niners coming out on top in that one. Whereas uh, uh, Baker Mayfield and the Lions, I mean, in the, in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the Lions, Baker's been playing well. Don't get me wrong. Baker's been the man. They've been doing some good things. Uh, the defense is is still full of full of great players. This is a tough one, but I'm gonna go with the home team here. So, NFC Championship would be Detroit at San Francisco in the AFC. I'm predicting Bills at Baltimore. And then we'll get into that once that happens. So that's my prediction on the wins. And uh, we'll keep you posted on any breaking news we have Raider-wise. Right now it's pretty quiet. Uh, quiet before the storm, so to speak. We'll keep an eye on the, the Patrick Graham thing. And that's it, man. I'm not going to hold y'all, man. Just win, baby. And uh, go Raiders. Peace. Thanks for tuning into today's episode. Please be sure to subscribe, download, and share B. We really appreciate you spending your time with us here at They Follow from Burner's podcast with Raider Ragu.